Artificial sweeteners offer a delicious promise, the sugariness we love without any calories or consequences. But do the quickest online search and you'll be hit by a mass of conflicting information. I don't think artificial sweeteners are safe. You're looking to maintain that sweet taste, but also trying to lose weight at the same time. So there is that benefit. I don't know what they're actually made of. I think it'll be scary to find out, maybe. Artificial sweeteners are perfectly safe. That People can consume them with confidence. They've been tested hundreds of times. The question really ought to be is, what's the evidence they're good for us? Some of the data that is out there suggests they're not as benign as we have been told they are. I'm Zishan Arain, a GP, and I've decided to sort out the sense from the nonsense and work out what effect, if any, artificial sweeteners have on our health and bodies. The first artificial sweetener, saccharin, became popular during the World Wars, providing a sweet alternative when sugar was scarce. World sugar supplies are still far short of demand. Boy, does that look good. But honey, what will these calories do to my waistline? The post-World War II decades saw the rise of the first mass-marketed artificially sweetened products. Ads like this let consumers know that sweeteners had changed the equation between calorie intake and restraint. Metrical helps you restrict calories. Introducing the sweet life. Of By the 70s and 80s, advertisements emphasise indulgence, taste and sex appeal and told us we could lose weight by consuming. These products do get what we call a health halo. We think that we can eat them to excess because they're not going to have any negative effects to us or we do make other compromises in our choices because we're consuming that product. Today, artificial sweeteners are found in a wide variety of products. And it's easy to see where the confusion starts. Diet Cordial contains sweeteners 950 and 951. Even the term artificial sweeteners is confusing. Their actual scientific name is intense sweeteners, and there are 10 approved for consumption in Australia. Each one is a different chemical, but they share one important characteristic. They are many times sweeter than sugar. So you only need a minute amount to get the same sweetness. And they turn up in surprising places. Toothpaste, saccharin, mouthwash, saccharin, dietary supplement, aspartame. So even if you're avoiding them in your food, you may be getting them from other sources. But what exactly are artificial sweeteners? and how do they work? Dr Rebecca Labard is a biomolecular scientist from the University of New South Wales. Artificial sweeteners are things that give us the nice taste that we like of sugar, yeah. um, but our bodies don't extract the same energy from them. Um, so this one that I can put in my um, coffee has something called aspartame in it. Yeah. Um, that's really interesting because it's made up of two amino acids and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Yeah. So you could say it has more in common with a steak than okay. a sugar. Um, and it's a lot sweeter, which means you only need a small amount of it. So Rebecca, how do they make them so sweet? Well, it all comes down to the chemistry. To be perceived as sweet, a molecule must be the right shape to bind with the sweet taste receptors on our tongue. This sends a message to our brain, we've had something sweet. Artificial sweeteners fit these receptors better than sugar, which is why they can taste hundreds of times sweeter. Rebecca, are there any problems with having artificial sweeteners? This one in particular, aspartame has um, something called phenylalanine, an amino acid in it, which some people can't metabolise. Babies in hospitals are tested for it. It's something you'd know if you had that problem with it. About 1 in 10,000 people can't process aspartame. But for the rest of us, research from around the world says overwhelmingly that artificial sweeteners are safe. Sweeteners have been thoroughly tested and world-renowned food agencies continue to confirm their safety for regular human consumption. Just 
just the usual today? Yeah, just the sweet flavour. Sweeteners are very, very safe. Um, before they can come onto the market, they have to be safety assessed. Professor Paul Brent was Chief Scientist at Food Standards Australia New Zealand and advised the UN and World Health Organisation about food additive safety. And that safety process is very, very similar to that that's applied to a medicine. Certainly, we can put the idea that sweeteners cause cancer. We can completely dispel that because all of the studies show very, very clearly that uh, these sweeteners do not cause cancer. Like many Australians, Paul himself consumes artificial sweeteners on a regular basis, using them for weight management or to reduce sugar intake. I'm trying to cut down on my uh, consumption of sugar. When I go and have a coffee, I try and use uh, a sweetener instead of sugar. So there appears to be consensus around the idea that artificial sweeteners aren't dangerous. But does that mean that they're inert? What effect, if any, are they having on our health and bodies? At the University of Sydney, New research on fruit flies and mice is suggesting that the sweetener sucralose may be fueling rather than fighting weight gain. After about five days, we noticed that the animals that had had artificial sweetener began eating more. They ate 30% more calories. They also became hyperactive and had problems with sleeping. Normally, a sweet taste signals that energy is on the way. But in this case, sweet taste without calories seem to be tricking the animal's brain. When there was an imbalance between sweet taste and energy, it triggered a, kind of a fasting response in the animal, and it made them hungrier and made real sugar taste better, and then they ate more. When the expected calories failed to show up, the animal's brain tried to compensate by driving up appetite. Sweeteners, or at least the ones we've tested, are having an impact on the animal's nervous system. And so it would be possible that they have an effect on, on human nervous system. And it seems these effects might not be limited to the brain. At Purdue University in the United States, Professor Susan Swithers has been looking at how sweet taste without calories might affect the body, this time with the sweetener saccharin. When animals were given artificial sweeteners and also had a regular food that had sugar in it, then we would routinely see that the animals given the artificial sweeteners would gain excess weight um, and that they were fatter, even though they were getting fewer calories from the sweetened foods that we were giving them. We've actually measured a number of metabolic changes that seem to be caused by exposure to artificial sweetener in our animals. Swithers' research showed that the animal's physiological response to normal sugar was disrupted. We gave all of our animals what's known as an oral glucose tolerance test. It's the way that we identify diabetes in people. What we saw was that the animals that had previously gotten the artificial sweeteners were hyperglycemic. Their blood sugars went up higher than animals that had not been given the artificial sweeteners. In addition to not being able to control their blood sugar levels, they also released less of a peptide called GLP-1, which controls how fast food empties from your stomach. So if your stomach empties more rapidly because you don't release as much GLP-1, that may lead you to overeat. It is important to note here that these specific effects have only been shown in animals. Humans, however, were the subjects of a 2013 study published in the medical journal Diabetes Care, which found that sucralose could affect the way our body responds to sugar in other food we are eating. Whilst the sweeteners themselves might not have a direct metabolic effect on you, it could be that they influence how you metabolise the foods you consume with them. I want to see if the artificial sweetener sucralose affects how my body deals with sugar. Hi, Cody. Hey, Dr. V. So, got you in for the modified glucose tolerance test. Yep. I drink my meal substitute, a 75ml bottle of glucose, and then chase it 
with an artificially sweetened drink. <sighs> that wasn't too bad. My blood is taken every 30 minutes for two and a half hours to track changes in my sugar levels and insulin. Now this is no way a scientifically valid experiment, it's just to satisfy my curiosity. I'm visiting endocrinologist Dr. Catherine Samaras to discuss the results of my tests. In the one with the sweetener, what we see is that even though you start with quite a really great glucose level, you have this very, very rapid rise in glucose. In my first test, without sweetener, my blood sugar level rose 40% at the 30 minute mark. In the second test, where I followed my meal substitute with an artificially sweetened drink, it rose 53%. This mimics some of the, the literature that's out there in the scientific arena. Indirectly, whilst artificial sweeteners have no calories themselves, they could be seen through the downstream effects as promoting obesity. One possible explanation for this is in the last decade, sweet taste receptors have been discovered throughout the body, including the gut. Animal studies have found that artificial sweeteners activate these gut sweet taste receptors, increasing the absorption of glucose. This means when you consume sweeteners with your meal, sugar enters your bloodstream earlier and faster. So the idea that the sweeteners have no effect and that they're completely inert, um, that was really based on our lack of understanding of exactly how complicated the digestive um, system is. When we look at data from long-term population studies, we can see some interesting associations between artificial sweeteners and health outcomes. What we see with these real-world observational studies is that people who drink um, typically about one or more diet sodas a day are more likely to gain weight, to gain belly fat, to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, to develop high blood pressure, to develop metabolic syndrome, and to develop cardiovascular disease. There's an equal number of studies which I think are better designed um, and uh, are more robust, which actually show no effect uh, on these particular disease states. Here, yeah, grab this lever. As a new dad, one observational study in particular caught my attention. I'm Skyping Associate Professor Megan Azad, an investigator on the child study who published her findings in May 2016. It's an incredible study that we're doing here in Canada where we've recruited over 3,500 pregnant women and followed them and their babies as they grow up. So in this particular study, we used data from the mom's nutritional surveys. And so what we found, surprisingly, was that women who consumed one or more artificially sweetened beverage per day were more than twice as likely to have an infant who was overweight at one year of age compared to women who didn't consume these beverages at all. Our study didn't go as far as establishing mechanisms, but we have some ideas. So one involves the gut microbiome or the bacteria in our intestines. So if the maternal consumption of sweeteners is changing the microbiome, this could be passed on to the babies at birth and influence their weight gain during infancy. The other possibility is that these artificial sweeteners are changing the mother and infant's metabolism, although more research needs to be done to confirm that. These types of population studies, there are many factors at work, which is why scientists can't exactly draw a direct cause and effect between sweeteners and these negative health outcomes. Well, we can't say they cause the problems because they're not experiments, they're observations. So it could just be the case that the people who are choosing to use diet sodas are people who are already unhealthy. Those studies are really in contradiction to that, that broad totality of the evidence base that shows that they're perfectly safe to be consumed in moderation. So what do we make of all this? There does seem to be a growing number of studies suggesting sweeteners may not be inert and certainly deserve closer scrutiny. But what's the big picture? It's about really, ultimately, diet and health. Professor Peter Rogers was involved in a review of studies investigating the impact of artificial sweeteners on energy intake and body weight. Although comprehensive, it's worth noting that the study was funded by an organisation with industry ties. 
We carried out this review on low calorie sweeteners because there seemed to us to be a, a lot of confusion in, in the area. So claims that low calorie sweeteners are actually unhelpful to energy intake control and weight control. In total, 90 animal and 155 human studies were examined. We were able to conclude very clearly from our review that low calorie sweeteners, when used in place of sugar, are helpful in reducing energy intake and body weight. However, experts also warn that if you use artificial sweeteners to help in weight loss, you need to be mindful you don't replace calories saved with other foods. And that's the removal of restraint effect. I'm having a diet drink today, so therefore I can have a larger serving of chips, in which case any of the benefit that you would have gained from having a lower calorie or lower energy intake is counteracted by the fact that you've eaten more of something else. Whether you include sweeteners as part of your weight management plan or not, one thing most of the experts we've spoken to agree on. You should always consider how they fit into your overall diet and lifestyle. On their own, low calorie sweeteners won't provide the entire solution, so they have to be consumed in relation to uh, otherwise um, healthy diet. Whether you have natural sugar or whether you have artificial sweetener, perhaps just don't have it as regularly as we're having it now. If your concern over artificial sweeteners is likely to drive you back to sugar or to sugar, that would be a bad health choice to make. There's the third option, which is the unsweetened product, and that's where we should be encouraging people to go.